Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. We are so excited these days. The seed catalogs have come in, we're looking through them all. We have started seeds for our greenhouse for winter and spring planting, and now we're getting even more excited to plan our summer gardens. Today we're gonna to take some time to show you guys some of our favorite varieties of things that we grow in the garden. Now if you watched one of our last videos we talked about this year coming up, we're going to have kind of a back to basics garden. Meaning that we're not going to grow a lot of different varieties. We're going to focus on the varieties that we have come to really love and that we know produce really well for us every year. We thought maybe you guys would like to know our favorite varieties <clears throat> of the things that we grow that will ultimately feed our family. Our goal here is to grow as much of our own food as possible, grow as much of our own meat, raise the animals for that. And this year, hopefully everything will go as planned and we'll get a huge harvest and a ton of food put up for the rest of the year. Right, our new greenhouse is gonna be a big part of that plan. It's gonna give us a real jump start on the spring and be able to get us going through the fall and winter next year. But today we're gonna to focus mainly on the plants that we're gonna be growing out in the garden come springtime. And we're going to get started telling you our absolute favorite. Let's start off with the plants that you can actually put into the garden the earliest. So let's start off with lettuce. So for lettuce, there's really only one type that we plant every single year. We do experiment with some others, but this is the one that every year goes into the garden. It's actually from Baker Creek Seed Company, and it's called Rocky Top Mix. It's just an awesome mix of different colors and varieties of lettuce and it just always seems to do excellent. It's a leaf lettuce, so you, once it's big enough, you can cut it and then it'll continue to grow and grow and grow, and you really have a long harvest with that. Right, in fact, we have a bunch of it started right now, and that's gonna be going out to the greenhouse uh, pretty much any day. We're getting some really bad weather this weekend, and we're kinda of waiting for that to pass, and then we're gonna get some things moved out to the old greenhouse uh, into some pots. So the next thing we're going to talk about is cabbage. Now we have tried a lot of different cabbages throughout the years and really have only had really good success with one. And that is called Golden Acres Cabbage and that's from Baker Creek as well. We had such great luck with it. It was really fast producing, had a nice sized head. But last year we experimented with something for the first time on all of our brassicas, which is a family of vegetables. That's cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, those kinds of things. We used floating row covers in order to keep the bugs off of it. And really it's the cabbage worms which come onto the plants from eggs from the cabbage moth. It did wonderfully for right. us. We had the most beautiful cabbage last year. Right, in fact, it, it did so well that we ended up with like way more than we had even planned on getting. Well, normally we plant a lot more than we need because we assume that a lot of it's gonna get you know destroyed by the bugs, but last year, with the floating row covers, we really had no bug damage at all. And I think that's really because of the floating row covers, but what it did is it allowed the Golden Acres cabbage to just you know, do to its fullest potential what it's supposed to do. And they were nice big heads of cabbage and we were so happy. We also had great success last year with cauliflower. Now cauliflower is something that we have struggled to find a variety that just does well for us. Right. And last year we tried a hybrid for the first time. Now if we can grow successfully what we need from an heirloom seed variety, we absolutely do that hands down. We had tried several different varieties in the past of cauliflower and just were so frustrated that we thought, you know, we're going to try a hybrid this year or, you know, last year and we did it and it was amazing. Now right. we also used the floating row covers on them, which helped a great deal, but the variety was absolutely wonderful. It was called Snow Crown and we got the seeds from Totally Tomato. Yeah, it really was by far the best that we'd ever done. We also planted an heirloom variety last year and we, even with the floating roll covers, we had a similar experience to what we always have with cauliflower, which is that it never formed a real nice head. Uh, and it just kind of, you know, you could go out and pick little shoots here and there, but it just never formed a really nice head of cauliflower that you could bring in. But the snow crown, the hybrid, I mean, it was just beautiful. It looked 
like something you would buy in the store. I mean, it was just amazing. And because of the floating roll cover, we had no bugs at all. Right, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Now, one vegetable that we still have yet to find a favorite is broccoli. Uh, it's something that we've tried a lot of varieties as well, but we just, even with the floating roll covers last year, it, it just didn't do well for us. And so we're still on the lookout for a really good variety of broccoli. If you guys know one, either heirloom or hybrid, let us know. Uh, we're on the lookout for something new to try this year. Well, let's move on to our favorite varieties of beans. So of course, everybody loves to have green beans in the garden and we're no exception. We grow quite a few green beans every year. In fact, this year we're putting in two rows of green beans in the garden. Our rows are 50 feet long, so we'll be doing 100 feet of green beans. The one that we have found that works the best for us here in the Missouri Ozarks is called Contender. It's an heirloom variety as well. We pick it up at Baker Creek and it just always does exceptionally well. We never have problems with insects on it. We don't cover it or spray or anything. It just always does well all by itself. They produce fairly early. Uh, at least I think so. It seems like we're so. always one of the first ones around to have green beans. And I mean, they just explode. Once they start coming on, it's like an everyday kind of deal. We also like to grow a variety of dry beans. And last year was a huge success. We grew a variety of pinto beans called Tiger Eye. And we grew one whole 50 foot row of it. It is a climbing type, a vining type. And they were really productive. They were so easy. We basically just planted the seeds in the ground gave it a trellis to grow on and we didn't have to look at them again until they were, you know, the pods were starting to turn brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're a beautiful bean. They are so pretty. So we really recommend the tiger eyes. Right. Those we actually got from Baker Creek as well. So the next up is something that was actually one of my favorite things to grow last year. And no, it's not tomatoes. <laughs> Those obviously are always my favorite. But last year we did so well with watermelons. Now we did a couple varieties last year, but there's only one that I think we're gonna redo, and that was called Strawberry. I know it's kind of confusing when people come to the farmer's market and wanna buy one, and they say, what kind of watermelon is that? And you say, strawberry, and they get confused. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was called Strawberry, and it did so well. Even though the season got off to kind of a rough start because we did have a lot of squash bugs and cucumber beetles, the plants made it through, and after they made it through kind of that really bad part, they just took off. They did so well, and we ended up with way more watermelons than we ever have in the past. And so that will definitely be a variety that we will do again. Now, I do have to tell you, the one kind of downside to that variety is that they do have a lot of seeds. So if you absolutely cannot stand watermelon with seeds, that may not be the variety for you, but for us, it was great and the flavor was amazing. Personally, I don't feel like you get that awesome flavor in a seedless watermelon, but everybody's taste is different. Now let's talk about cucumbers. There is no garden that is complete without cucumbers. Last year we had a terrible year for cucumbers, but it was not because the seeds were bad or the variety was bad. We planted four times and not one time did it take off and do well for cucumbers. But the year before that, we had so many cucumbers that we were taking five gallon buckets of them to the pigs. Right. So there was just something about last year that was off. But our favorite variety of cucumbers to grow is called Market Moor. They are nice standard sized slicing cucumbers. They look just like the ones that you would buy from the store, but they're grown in your garden, so they taste a lot better. We highly recommend those. Right. And then I would say a runner up to those is a cucumber called Dar, uh, D-A-R, which was just also a really good producer. They stayed a little bit smaller and more compact, uh, but they were also just an excellent variety. The Dar variety doesn't grow super viney. So if you don't have a lot of space, if you don't have a lot of trellises or whatever, uh, the Dar variety is very good and they were very good tasting. Right. So next up is another one of my personal favorite things in the garden, and that is okra. I like things that I can just be out in the garden and eating while I'm working. So for me, I love raw okra. Uh, I don't meet many people that like raw okra, but 
I love to eat it right out in the garden. Let me know if you do too. So the variety of okra that we're going to stick with, and we've tried quite a few different varieties now, but the one variety that we're going to stick with is called Clemson Spineless. It's not a big secret of any kind. I mean, it's pretty standard variety, but I think it's a pretty standard variety for a reason, and that's because it does really well. They don't grow really big really fast. They don't get super woody, uh, and they just always produce a ton of okra. Okay, now let's move on to my absolute favorite thing to grow in the garden, and that is peppers. Now, over the last couple of years, I have gone like absolutely bonkers planting peppers, not only in quantity, but in types of varieties. But this year, like we said at the beginning, we're doing a back to basics kind of garden. So this year we are significantly limiting the uh, number of varieties that we're going to be planting. But for sure, this green pepper or bell pepper that we're going to be planting is called Emerald Giant. That is a nice sized blocky bell pepper, right. nice thick juicy walls. Uh, the, the plants get very big and just overall a fantastic plant. I have grown lots of other types of bell peppers and I always come back to Emerald Giant. So if you're looking for a tried and true bell pepper variety, consider the Emerald Giant. So of course, along with the green peppers, we also need to have a jalapeno in the garden every single year. And we've grown quite a few varieties of those as well. But the one that we're going to stick with from here on out is called Craig's Grande Jalapeno. It's an heirloom and it's just amazing. The peppers get nice and big and they turn red really nicely. They don't split open or anything like that a lot. They just really did really, really well. So that is a variety that we're going to grow every year because they're so prolific. Now last year there was a pepper that we grew that Sarah planted that really was kind of a surprise to me how much I enjoyed it. And it was called Notapeno. It's a jalapeno pepper that's not spicy at all. Sometimes I just like peppers to snack on and you know you can buy little bags of peppers in the store just snacking peppers. But you don't really want to grab a jalapeno and just <laughs> snack on it. I mean, sometimes I do, but not all the time. But these jalapenos were awesome because they taste like a jalapeno pepper, but there's no heat at all. Uh, those were from Baker Creek, and we were super happy with them. That variety actually ended up being highly sought after as a plant start at the farmer's market. But also when we took our extra peppers to the farmer's market to sell, the, the not hot jalapenos, the not jalapenos were super popular. And people were really surprised that the pepper really did have the flavor of a jalapeno. It just didn't have that spicy kick. Right. We had people come back week after week to buy those from us. Right, yeah, it was pretty cool. So now we finally get to my absolute favorite thing in the entire garden, which is tomatoes. This is where I probably spend 90% of my time in the garden, most <laughs> of the time because I'm just eating. And if you could have a salt shaker out there with a permanent location in the garden, right. you would just eat tomatoes right. with salt. I usually bring a salt shaker in my pocket with me out <laughs> to the garden to eat tomatoes. So Now there are two varieties that have become absolute favorites for us in the garden. We'll always have these two varieties. The first is the Jet Star tomato. Now that's a hybrid tomato, but we come back to it every single year because the yields are fantastic. The size is always consistent. They do so well on a sandwich to eat them raw, but I also use them for diced tomatoes. I also use them for tomato juice. They're fantastic. Now the second variety that will always be in our garden is called Opalka. It's spelled O P A L. K A. It is a paste tomato, which is used a lot for making sauces. Now a paste tomato has a lot less water inside of it. A slicing tomato has a ton of water, you probably know that. But if you grow paste tomatoes specifically, there's a lot less time you need to be boiling off all of that water when you're processing it and turning it into paste. So we grow half slicers and half paste tomatoes. Now the Opolka tomato is an heirloom variety and it gets really quite big in comparison to some of the other paste tomatoes. Right. It is fantastically consistent and a really good producer. Now as far as cherry tomatoes go, we have tried 
We've Pro tried a ton of varieties. Right, probably a hundred varieties. <laughs> probably not really that many, but we've tried a lot. And I'll be real honest, I've yet to find one that just makes me say, this is one we'll do every single year. So I'm on the lookout for what will hopefully become my favorite cherry tomato. Now we have found some that we really like the flavor on. Uh, we found some that we think grow really well, but we haven't found one that has everything in one thing. So let me tell you some of the criteria that we're looking for in a cherry tomato. I don't like those really tiny cherry tomatoes, mostly because they always seem like a lot more work to go out and pick. So I like kind of a medium sized cherry tomato, nothing too big, but not those tiny little things. The other thing is that we're looking for a variety that doesn't split really easily. Now we irrigate our garden with drip irrigation, so we keep a pretty consistent schedule of watering uh, because that is important with tomatoes to give them consistent water. But it's not uncommon here in the Ozarks for us to get, you know, a two or three inches of rain in a day uh, which, you know, all of a sudden dumps a lot more water on the on the tomatoes than they've had in the past. So the biggest problem that we've had with cherry tomatoes is that when that happens is they split wide open and we end up losing just about everything that was on the vine that was already ripe. So I don't know if a variety even exists that is, you know, kind of immune to that or better about that. But if you know one, we'd love to know. So you guys, now you know our favorite varieties of some of the key vegetables that we're going to be growing this year. Right, so if you want to go out and buy them and grow them along with us this year, you absolutely can. Uh, these are some of the best things that we have found. So you guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button below before you leave. Share this video with all your friends who are also thinking, hey, what am I going to grow this year and what varieties are the best? And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.